Hey coders, what's up? It's Chris here. Welcome to part two of query constraints. So in the previous lesson, we looked at how to perform more specific queries by adding constraints. And you learned that there are a whole bunch of different constraints you can add, such as equal to, not equal to, contained in, not contained in, and so on. Today, we're going to look at some other filters that can help you refine your query some more. So let's look at select keys first of all. Just to refresh your memory, in our parse uh, class for contact, we have a couple of fields. We have email, first name, and last name. So what if I were only interested in the email for this query and I didn't care about the first name or last name? Well, we can actually save some bandwidth and data for the user if we don't retrieve this data. We can just say, retrieve the email data. That's all we want. And select keys allows you to do that. So we would type query dot select keys. And here we pass in an array of the keys that we want to return. So we would do that. And then this would be in addition to any other constraints that we have. So let's say we were uh, using this query right here. Let me just grab that, put that there. Here we are grabbing all of the contacts that have age greater than 30. And I only want their emails. So this is going to do that. And then after that, remember, you have to go uh, find objects in background or find objects in background with block to actually execute the query. Okay, so that's select keys. Another thing that you can do is called limit. So let me actually just comment this out. I don't want to delete it. So if you download this project, you have it for reference. So let me just copy this line. Let's say we're performing another query and we want to limit the results to a certain number. We can do limit and we can set it to some number. So it says here the default is 100 with a maximum of 1,000 results being returned at a time. So say I want to limit it to 10 results. That's how you would do it. Now you saw the maximum results for a query is 1,000 being returned. So what if you expect that your query might return more than 1,000? Well, you're going to have to use skip. So let me show you how this works. Just comment this out. So this query limit you know, if I expected this query to return more than 1,000 and I set my limit to 1,000, it's going to return the first 1,000 results. If I want to get anything beyond that, I'm going to have to do something like this, query.skip. And this is going to uh, skip the first X number of results. So I would say, you know, skip the first 1,000 because I got it before and give me the next whatever remainder there is. So that's how skip works. And then we have some sorting. Uh, this is actually not sort by, it's order by. And what we would do is just query dot order by, and you can order by ascending or descending on a certain key. We can say, you know, give me first name like that in alphabetical order. Okay, and this get first object method will basically just return the first result in your data set. Let's say if you're just interested in a single result, you would go like instead of find objects in background, you would say get first object, get first object in background probably with block. And so it this block of code is going to return a single PF object or it could be nil. You can see here that there's a question mark. So it could return nil. So this would be your object. And this would be your error. And in here, code to run when first object is returned. So this is how the get first object method works. Let me comment that out. And finally, count objects. What if you're only interested in the number of results? In this case, you know, we're looking for the people who have age greater than 30, but we don't care about the actual people. We only care about the number of people where the age is greater than 30. So we would say query dot count objects in background or count objects in background with block. And you would do this instead of find objects because this will just return you the count. So let me expand that block. See, you get an int there. I'm just going to call that number. And this is an error parameter. And in here, we're going to say code to run when the count is returned. And so that's how you would use that. 
And next I want to show you guys how to do compound queries. So, so far we've looked at all of these query constraints where adding more constraints is going to be an AND clause. So like I said for this query right here for example, we are creating a query on the contact class and we're saying return all of the contacts where the first name has the prefix TO and the first name has the suffix Y. What if we wanted to do an OR? What if we wanted to say return all the contacts where it either has a prefix of TO or has a suffix of Y? So in that case, this wouldn't fit the bill, right? Because if we add these two constraints, it becomes an AND. So the technique to do an OR query or otherwise known as a compound query is what they call it. Uh, you have to create two queries, one looking for results which has the prefix of TO and another query looking for results which have the suffix Y. And then we can use those two queries to create a compound query. So let me show you how that works. Let me just create another section down here. So compound queries, I'm just going to write OR here so you remember that. Okay, so let query equals, um, let's actually make it more descriptive prefix query equals that class name is contact and so we're going to add our clause now prefix query dot where key has prefix so key I want first name and the prefix is what we had before like that and I'm going to create another query I'm going to call this the suffix query and this is also performed on the contact class and this one, let's add the clause, has suffix, first name, uh, ends with Y. Okay, so now I have two separate queries. Now I'm going to create a compound query to house both of them. I'm going to call this the OR query. Actually, let's use capital Q here just to, for some consistency. And what we would do here is write PF query. It's a class method. So it's, uh, let's see, or, yeah, there it is, or query with sub queries. So in here, you pass in an array of PF query. So that's what we're going to do here. And we're going to combine the prefix query with the suffix query. And here, this is our compound query. So all we need to do is run it by saying find objects in background like that. Just like we've done if we were doing a single query. So it returns array of PF objects, objects, error, code to run when the compound query returns. So in this case, it's going to search through the contact store for all queries which has first name equal to or starts with TO or first name ends with Y. Uh, and actually Xcode is complaining here because I changed this to a capital Q. I need to do the same here and here. So that's queries in a nutshell. I hope that it gives you some ideas about how to query your own parse backend. And there's still a ton of things to talk about regarding the Parse platform and how to access your data. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the video. And please share the video if you think that it would help someone else. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.